I had a question about calculating whether or not substances are polar or nonpolar when trying to figure out solutions. So I didn't bring home a copy of a periodic table, but I did try and download one and take a look at some different elements on a periodic table. And you'll notice that I picked just a few random ones here for us to practice with. Um, under the symbol for the element, typically you'll find its atomic mass, and very often in the bottom corner, you're going to find the electronegativity. So this little number here in the bottom corner is your electronegativity for the negativity, sorry, for the element. So when we're trying to decide if something is polar or nonpolar, what we have to do is look at the two elements involved in the bond. For example, in the molecule methane, CH4, we see that we have bonds between carbons and hydrogens. So the methane molecule is shaped like this. We're going to spread the four hydrogens out around the carbon. And we notice that there are four separate bonds between carbons and hydrogens. So electronegativity talks about how strong the element is at pulling electrons towards itself. Carbon pulls electrons towards itself with 2.5. Hydrogen pulls electrons towards itself with 2.1. When we subtract, we get a difference. This difference in electronegativity tells us about the type of bond we have. So if we were to look at it on a number line, our general rule is if we have a number that lands between 0 up to, but not including, 0 0.5, we would call this nonpolar. If the difference that we find in electronegativity is from 0.5 all the way up to, but not including, 1.67, we call this polar. Several textbooks are going to use the number 1.9 as the tipping point because anything around here and up is ionic. Now on a test, I'm definitely not going to pick anything where we find a difference in electronegativity in this range because it has you making a judgment call and that's not truly fair. So when I did the difference in the math here and I got a number of 0 0.4, we hit this point. Methane's a nonpolar molecule, but there's actually more to it than that. If, for example, I were to have done carbon tetrachloride, CCl4, again, the shape of the molecule has four chlorines evenly spaced around the carbon. Um, so there's four different bonds here, but they're all carbon-chlorine bonds. If I look at chlorine's electronegativity, we get 3.0, and again, carbon's is 2.5. Here, the difference is 0 0.5. This one actually falls into the range of polar, but carbon tetrachloride is a nonpolar molecule. And the reason it's nonpolar, despite the fact that my change in electronegativity is above this tipping point, is because of the shape. Each chlorine can pull on electrons stronger than the carbon does. So this chlorine is pulling electrons a little bit this way, but this chlorine is pulling them opposite just as this guy is pulling and this guy is pulling. The pull in all four directions is effectively canceling each other. So because of the shape of the molecule, sometimes we can do math to figure out polarity and go, wow, this should be polar, but the shape of the molecule makes it to be nonpolar. One other way we can tell from the shape of the molecule if it's polar or nonpolar is to look for electron pairs. Now, at the beginning of our lessons, we talked about the five steps for drawing molecules. I'm going to quickly draw out a couple of them here for you. Take a look at the molecule for water. We have shared electron pairs between the oxygens and the hydrogens and unpaired electrons in two spots. Here's another molecule. Look at nitrogen. Nitrogen's in group five on the periodic table and has one, two, three, four, five electrons. Each hydrogen comes in and shares here. Now, in spite of electronegativity differences, these pairs of electrons are very negative looking. That gives this entire end of the molecule a delta, this little S that closes off at the bottom with a minus sign means looks a little bit. This whole end of the molecule looks a little negative. And the hydrogen's electrons are pulling away, and so the hydrogen ends 
are delta positive. They look a little positive. So this molecule is very polar. Same with ammonium. The ammonia molecule has a pair of electrons, and this free pair of electrons gives it a negative looking end. And again, the hydrogens would be positive looking ends. So again, this whole molecule is polar. So our first step when we're trying to decide polarity is check your electronegativities and subtract. If you get a number between 0 0.5 and about 1.6, it's going to be a polar molecule. But then think of the shape. If there is a pair of electrons that is not used in bonding, that is an unpaired set of electrons, then the molecule might itself be polar. If there is no unbonded pair of electrons, another example being aluminum trichloride, has no free electron pair, then these guys, all with their electron pulls, will make this molecule nonpolar. I hope this helps.